Uh, I'm currently at, this is called the Hal Naka. Uh, it's the, I didn't make the name up, Hal Naka, whatever. My name is Andy Hornby, photographer and vlogger. 15 years ago I started teaching myself photography. Today, I travel the UK as a professional wedding photographer, landscape photographer and filmmaker. Learn from my experiences, my mistakes and my tips and advice. Join me on my photography adventures. Hello and welcome to another video. I know it's been a long time coming. I have been, uh, well I've been doing a lot of weddings recently and it's been taking a lot of my time. So I'm back, I'm doing video. Uh, I'm currently at, this is called the Hal Naka. Uh, it's a, I didn't make the name up, Hal Naka, whatever. This is the Hal Naka windmill, uh, just the other side of Chichester from where I live which is in Sussex in the UK, south coast of the UK. And on top of the hill, you can't quite see, but the views I've got behind are absolutely stunning. I can see right down to the coast and it looks absolutely amazing. But this is a local windmill. It's currently being done up, so it has got this uh, fence around it, but I've taken some shots. I've used the gate on the front there to kind of cover the bottom. And I've done a little bit of a time lapse, which hopefully uh, you've already seen at the beginning of this video and if you like that please slap a thumbs up on this video because that's going to help me. So today I'm looking at, uh, we're viewing, albeit from my own personal point of view, the new Nikon or Nikon and Canon mirrorless range. Yeah, let's do this. Okay, Nikon and Canon have come out with their new mirrorless range uh, cameras and on paper they look quite good to be fair. Uh, I have written down a load of notes on all the specs and stuff, but you know what? This video isn't going to be about the specs. This video is going to be more about my own personal views on uh, how they stack up against the Sony, because to be honest, Sony's kind of where it's at with mirrorless, and they have been for the last uh, few years. I think, if I'm not mistaken, I'm sure if I am, someone will comment down below, but in North America, Sony mirrorless uh, sales has outsold any other system, DSLR, mirrorless or whatever. You'd have to kind of look at the fact that mirrorless is kind of the way it's going. I know there's some old school guys out there who don't want that to happen, but unfortunately I don't think it got a lot of choice. Uh, DSLR is great and will always be great, film was great, it'll always be great, but there's a natural progression and mirrorless seems to be the way everything's going at the moment. So Sony have been innovating in the mirrorless range for about five or six years and the current systems that they have out there the a7 III series and the a9 is kind of doing really well even up up against some really high-end dslrs so you have to kind of ask yourself what is canon and nikon gonna do if photography is going mirrorless then uh, they've got to really up their game i hope they do but the new systems that have come out, they don't seem to be up to scratch. And I say this because the, uh, the, the Nikon or Nikon Z6 and Z7, they're pitched up against the uh, A7 III and A7R III uh, in all aspects with regards to ISO, with regards to uh, megapixels, all that kind of stuff. That's what they're kind of pitching up against. And even price, the price, although the Z7 I think is slightly more expensive than the A7R3, <coughs> that's what they're pitching up against. And <clears throat> to be honest, you would think that Nikon, Nikon, sorry, I'm just gonna say Nikon because that's, that's the way I know, I know it. Uh, they kind of would have looked at how Sony have been doing 
and at least bore something out on par with what Sony have at the moment. And I'll be completely honest with you, there's some functions on Sony cameras that you would think Nikon and Canon I'll come to in a minute uh, would be looking at and thinking, you know what, we need that in our system, we need that in our system, we need that in our system. Uh, Sony got a big backlash when they bought their, their mirrorless ranges out, especially the A7, uh, the A7 II and the A7R II, <clears throat> because there were things like battery life, there were things like card slots, there was only one card slot. There was the, the lens range, even after three or four years, Sony still didn't have very, very good lenses for their mirrorless systems. And I'll be honest with you, Nikon have come out this year, that's, that's kind of three years after the A7 II range, and they've, they've made all the same mistakes. They, they've, the, the battery life is rubbish, there's only one card slot, and there's hardly any, uh, and there's hardly any lenses for it. Okay, they've got adapters, but if you've got adapters, why would people who already shoot Nikon want to go to mirrorless? People who shoot Nikon, who've got Nikon glass, aren't going to spend two grand on a system that doesn't do anything more for them. It kind of doesn't make any sense. The biggest drawback I see with the Nikon is the fact that it doesn't have eye autofocus. Now this has been something in, in Sony cameras since the, uh, since the A7 range has started coming out. Uh, eye autofocus is where portrait photographers, and let's face it, I mean these systems aren't cheap. I wouldn't buy one of these systems to do landscapes with. Why would I? I don't make any money from landscapes. I make my money in weddings and portraits. So these systems need to be, unless you've got money to throw away, you know, if you're rich and you've got money and you want you want a decent system, yeah, throw it away. Yeah, but if you're making money from a business in photography, you need a system that's going to be, you know, be comparable at least to something that, that's in the same price range in another system. Sony have had the the eye autofocus in their system since the A7 range came out, uh, and even some of their their crop sensor cameras have have eye autofocus, and it makes no sense that Nikon haven't gone, you know what, we need that. I don't understand why they haven't put it in, it doesn't make any sense. Uh, so for the fact that their, their Z6 costs the same amount of money as an A7 III, and that has got all the functions that, that it needs, it's got a better battery, it's got, it's got the eye autofocus, it's got, it's got a decent uh, lens selection, you know, I don't understand where Nikon fit into market. For, for wedding and portrait photographers. You know, if you're shooting Nikon already with a DSLR, you've got no reason whatsoever to upgrade to a mirrorless system that doesn't give you any more functions. Bewilders me. And there's certainly not gonna, not gonna be anyone from Sony going to Nikon mirrorless, because for the same price, you get more for your money. Okay, I'm just gonna quickly cut in here a second and uh, talk about some of the things I like about the Nikon. The Nikon has a little LCD screen on top of the camera. We haven't really seen that much since uh, DSLR. So it's got a little LCD screen on top. It's got a brighter LCD screen on the back. And it also has really good weatherproofing that the Sonys don't have, which is a real shame, because I love my Sony system and I want to be able to take it anywhere I can. Uh, but unfortunately it doesn't have very good waterproofing. It's okay in a little bit of rain, but you couldn't take it in a, in a downpour. Uh, so you can't really use it landscape photography, you need to have that ability to use your system wherever you want to go and uh, the Sony isn't fantastic at that so the Nikon does have that. Canon. Now I actually like this Canon because Canon, I mean I shoot Canon anyway, I was a, I was a Canon shooter for 10 years and uh, uh, not that I've got anything against Nikon, if you shoot Nikon and you're getting pictures it's about the end product, right? I've always said that, it, it doesn't bother me. Uh, Canon system is uh, 30 megapixels, so it's, a, it's more than the a7 III and, and less than the a7R III. And I can't remember off the top of my head right now, because I haven't got my notes for me, I left them in the car, how much it costs. But I was thinking it's, it is kind of comparable to the a7 range. <coughs> it, again, the, the, I think the battery life is pretty poor on that. And the glass range, although they've got adapters, again, I think you pay an extra 100 quid for the adapters, there's a few other adapters, there's some nice bits and pieces I want to talk about the Canon uh, with their adapter because you can actually get an adapter that's got a filter 
holder so you can put the filter in the adapter so it's behind the glass actually works out quite well I'd like to see that that's uh, something I wouldn't mind looking at but uh, the Canon does have uh, an eye autofocus they call it pupil peaking or pupil detection uh, but you know what it's only on one shot at the moment they're saying that there's going to be a firmware update so you'll be able to do it in continuous but you know on release wouldn't you have that on your release setup why would you why would you say yeah buy this but in a little while we'll have a firmware update and you get more functions I understand that why it almost seems like they're, they're putting these out there really quickly Nikon came out like last month and Canon must have thought god we've got to get our stuff out there quick do go bosh and just threw out the system that doesn't seem ready it just doesn't seem like it's what the hell is that weird it just doesn't seem like it's got everything that it needs why would you do that i don't understand it doesn't make any sense yes they haven't got a very good glass range coming out with it as well i don't know that uh, the battery life seems pretty poor okay i want to cut in here and talk about some of the things i like about the canon and uh first thing it's got to flip out rotating screen so instead of it just flipping backwards and forwards it flips around to the front you could potentially use it as a as a vlogging setup it's got a new bar multi bar function it's called a multi-function bar it's like a slider that you can use your thumb to slide back and forward you can program it to to do various different things uh depending on the situation you're in that could be quite good uh i'd like to see that in action and uh i'll have to wait until someone's got one to have a look again i was talking about the adapters for the lenses i like that idea i like the idea of being able to put a filter on my uh on the, on the back end of my lens through the actual ad adapter so that's good and the other really good thing as well which i don't know why other manufacturers haven't looked at especially sony is that when you turn it off or you take the lens off it actually closes the shutter down so it actually protect the uh, sensor which is awesome and i don't know why other systems haven't done that before but uh I'm always swapping lenses on location when I'm at weddings lenses are getting swapped out all the time and I'm always getting dust I go out and I, I, I shoot landscapes at f22 sometimes if I want to get uh, like a sunburst or starburst effect and uh, sensor dust in my resulting images is generally quite bad so having that option to uh, shut that down would be absolutely amazing so you know it looks like Canon and Nikon have, have sat back watching Sony and their mirrorless range just just go from strength to strength I mean they made bad decisions in the beginning and we all know that but as photographers we said Sony we need better we need better batteries we need two card slots uh, that's the other thing about the Canon it doesn't have two card slots it only has one card slot and you you think they would grab a Sony camera and say we need this we need this we need this we need this you know the photographers want this they want that they want this so let's give them what they want uh, if sony can do it why the hell can't these other big companies that have got just as much money and put just as much into their production as as everyone else you know why aren't they doing it it doesn't make any sense uh canon saying buy this and in a few months time we'll have a, a firmware update that doesn't tell me anything good it doesn't give me anything to go on at all in fact it kind of it kind of puts me off i mean i shoot cam i still am shooting video on a canon now so i like canon canon's good i've always liked canon but nothing's telling me that i should go back to canon or i should have a look at nikon systems nothing's telling me at all and you could you could argue and a lot of people are saying that though this is the this is the first adoration of, of what they're going to do you know the next next series the next step is going to be good if you look at the production cycle of canon and nikon they're every you know one to two years sony's bringing out a new system every six months how are they going to compete i don't understand where where you know unless they're going to start having that that cycle of of, of production in their cameras I, I don't know how they're going to compete with what Sony are doing. It doesn't, it doesn't compute. It, something isn't right. They're either waiting and they've got something in the in the in the background that's going to go, whoa, shab this, and they have, they have like a top of the range, got everything on it, all the bells and whistles, and it's going to you know take over the market potentially. Is, is that what they're thinking, or do they just do they just want to pump out something to get to get the teeth wet in in 
in the mirrorless market. I mean, Canon had the M ranges, but they were rubbish, not bought them. So I've started with this new Canon R range, and I don't know, it just doesn't seem like it would be anything I'd want to pick up and shoot with. Uh, uh, you tell me what you think, and this is my own personal thoughts, by the way. There's bound to be people out there who are, who are, who are uh, you know, definitive Nikon or definitive Canon, and they're like, eh, whatever. But wouldn't you rather have a system where it competes with Sony? I mean, I, I, I think it would be brilliant to, to have Canon and Nikon do something that would rival Sony, because it will keep Sony going further. You know, Sony will innovate faster and better if they had any competition, I don't see that this Canon or, or Nikon systems uh, any kind of competition with what Sony's got at all. It, it doesn't make any sense. So, your thoughts, what do you think? Do you shoot Canon, do you shoot uh, Nikon? Would you buy either the, of the Nikons or, or the current Canon system that's coming out? Let me know down in the comments down below. Uh, let's get an argument going, because I'm sure this will, will pique some people's uh, interest who currently shoot Nikon or Canon. And like I say, I'm not against Canon or Nikon. Uh, I've never really had an issue with, you know, the whole whole photographic wars, whatever. It doesn't really bother me what you shoot with. I do workshops and I do photo walks. Everyone's got lots of different cameras, Panasonics, Olympus, whatever. For me, it's about the end result. And if I'm gonna spend money on, on my kit, it's gonna be on kit that is gonna help my portrait photography and I don't see these cameras being any kind of competition in the portrait world. Uh, I need a good focus system, I need a fast focus system and something that shoots continuous. If I'm at a wedding and I've got, I've got the new Canon, uh, how am I going to shoot, shoot the bride and groom walking down the aisle? I want continuous every time, flip the continuous, one button on, on the Sony, I'm there, done. Uh, you know, Canon's silent shooting on this is only one shot but they say that'll be updated with the firmware. Again, why, why are they doing something that needs a firmware update in, in two to three months time? I don't understand why they're bringing it out if it's not, it seems like it's not ready, surely. I know they want to be competitive and stuff, but I don't see that these cameras, either of these systems from Nikon or Sony are even competing currently with, with uh, Sony's A7R3 and A7 III range. You know, Nikon seems to be on par with A7R2 and the A7 II, but it still doesn't have the focus system of that. I mean, I shoot with the A7 R2, and, you know, it's a lot cheaper than the, the Z7. A lot cheaper. Buy one of them brand new. You've got a complete, you know, you've got a whole better system. Uh, and I understand that people who've got Nikons already have got Nikon glass, they're not going to want to go to a Sony range, and that's not what I'm saying. I'm not saying, I'm not trying to convince people to go to Sony. I'm trying to convince you to convince your current system company to, to do better, because ultimately it makes Sony do better. That's my thoughts. Uh, you got any questions, leave them in comments down below. Like I say, I'm back. I'm gonna be doing more videos. I've got some videos coming out soon. Uh, I was going to bring out a bracketing video a few weeks ago that I mentioned in my last video. Uh, and unfortunately, I haven't got around to uh, video the uh, stuff on my computer with that just yet. So that will be coming shortly. Uh, I'm going to make the trek back to my car, which is about a mile and a half down the hill that way, through trees and bushes, and I'm wearing shorts. I get cut up, but okay. So yeah, so hopefully I'll see you boys and girls soon on another video. If you uh, like this video and it gave you any kind of information, please whack a thumbs up. That's going to help me out greatly. And if you haven't done so already, please subscribe to my channel. I've got a lot more videos coming out. Uh, I'm going to be picking up the pace with my videos, going to new locations, doing a lot more landscape stuff. And uh, yeah, hit the notification bell so you get updates when I upload a new video. Until next time, keep shooting and I'll see you boys and girls soon. Take care, bye.
you made it this far in a video, thanks. To walk through that, and you'll notice that I tend to not wear anything other than shorts, and my legs are stinging, stinging nails everywhere. Uh, yeah, if you're coming up here, it's a hell knacker. Wear trousers, jeans, something to protect your legs. See you later.